This is a story about a wolf named Lobo. Lobo was a very special wolf, not only because he ended up changing the world, but he had very special skills, advanced skills as a wolf. Lobo and his pack lived in New Mexico, in Currenpaw Valley. And in the end, they were forced to prey on cows and sheep. This is because natural prey such as bison and elk had been deprived. The ranchers tried to kill the wolves with traps and poison, but this pack was very clever, probably because they had Lobo leading them and they just pushed the poison to one side. They actually used to just take the pieces of poison out and continue to eat the prey. So all these efforts failed. A professional hunter named Ernest Thomas Seaton liked a bit of a challenge. So when he heard about Lobo, that was it. He was determined to get that wolf. Plus there was quite a nice bounty for the head of Lobo. So Seaton got to work. He did what he always did. He started poisoning pieces of bait and just scattered them all over Lobo's territory. So later, Seaton excitedly went to review the baits to see if Lobo had fallen into his trap. All of the baits were gone. Seaton was so happy. He thought he'd won. He thought he'd got Lobo and his pack. But then later on, he found the five baits. They were all piled up and scattered around them was Lobo's feces. This was perhaps him showing his contempt. Seaton was absolutely furious. He felt Lobo was mocking him. How dare he? How dare that wolf, that wolf that's causing all this trouble, mock me, a professional hunter? I'm going to get him. Seaton couldn't rest. Sleepless nights, trying to come up with the best plan. He was going to get Lobo, no matter what it took. So Seaton then decided to take things to the next level. He bought some specialised traps and hid them all around Lobo's territory but concealed them. Did this work? No, it did not. He found Lobo's tracks going from trap to trap, exposing each trap as he went. Seaton was beside himself, or he became beyond frustrated. He didn't know what to do. This was supposed to take two weeks. He was now in four months. So he didn't really know what to do next. He knew he had to do something extreme. So one night when Seaton was camping, everything changed. He found Lobo's tracks, but he also found other tracks. He found Lobo's tracks following another wolf's tracks. And then suddenly it dawned on him Lobo's mate, that must be his weakness. He knew what he had to do. If he was gonna get Lobo, if he was gonna bring that terror wolf down, he had to go through his mate. This mate, a white, beautiful wolf, became known as Blanca. He left traps out for her. He left bait out for her. Finally, he was successful. When Seaton found her, he was ecstatic. There she was whining, suffering and in agony with Lobo by her side, her loyal mate. At the sight of Seaton and his partner, Lobo ran to a safe distance, but he could still see everything happening. Seaton and his partner showed no mercy. They killed Blanca and then tied her to their horses and dragged her away. Seaton could hear Lobo howling and following. He heard the howls of Lobo for two days afterward. The cry of someone who has lost his world, his everything. So Seaton even described this howl as having an unmistakable note of sorrow. He also said that this howl was no longer the defiant howl of the old Lobo, but a long plaintive wail. Although Seaton felt remorse for Lobo, he decided to continue with his plan to capture him. So despite the danger, Lobo fell into the trap. He followed Blanca's scent all the way to Seaton's ranch. So Seaton set up more traps, but used Blanca's body 
as scent all over them. So up until this point, Lobo hadn't really showed himself to Seaton, but the grief was just too much. He was at his most vulnerable. He'd lost all sense of caution. So on January the 31st in 1894, Lobo was captured by Seaton. All his legs were caught in a trap. On Seaton's approach, despite Lobo's injuries, he stood and howled. Touched by this, by the bravery and loyalty to Blanca, Seaton couldn't kill him. The remorse was becoming too much. Seaton and his partners didn't know what to do with Lobo. They knew they couldn't kill him, but they didn't know what to do with him. So they muzzled him and they used ropes to tie him up. They even tried to feed him, which of course he wasn't interested in. He wouldn't even look at them. All he could do was just gaze across his fallen kingdom. Well, later on that night, Lobo died. Lobo died of a broken heart. Seaton felt so much remorse for Lobo and he regretted his actions. This experience with Lobo completely changed him. Seaton changed his behavior. He started protecting wildlife and the environment instead of killing it. He wanted to inspire people. He wanted people to stop and acknowledge animals. He wanted people to acknowledge the environment and see animals for the important role that they play. And this story did indeed inspire many people. Lots of people started to feel that compassion towards wildlife, towards animals like Lobo. And it also spurred the conservationist movement. So this story of Lobo touched the hearts of many. Oh.